Imagine a ball spinning at a speed of a thousand miles an hour. The air surrounding this ball also spins, right? In addition, the air spins much more at the edges of the ball. In reality, this ball is Earth. The edges of the ball are the poles, and the air spinning at the poles is actually the polar vortex. The Earth rotates from west to east, and so does the air. And the polar vortex also rotates from west to east at about 150 miles an hour speed. Polar vortex. If you live in North America or Europe, or if you live in Australia, you might hear the terms polar vortex or polar blizzard very often in the winter, which brings in bad weather, including sub-zero temperatures and lots of snow. Now, let's see what is a polar vortex. Well, the Earth has two poles, the North Pole and the South Pole. And the poles are very cold as there is less sunlight. And the poles are naturally very cold, especially its air. So a polar vortex is actually a large area of low pressure and cold air that rotates eastward around the poles. And eastward means that the air moves counterclockwise at the North Pole and clockwise at the South Pole. And this stable polar vortex spreads around a 600 mile diameter, 30 miles up in the skies in the stratosphere, and it has wind speeds of up to 150 miles per hour. Imagine a ball spinning at a speed of a thousand miles an hour. The air surrounding this ball also spins, right? In addition, the air spins much more at the edges of the ball. In reality, this ball is Earth. The edges of the ball are the poles, and the air spinning at the poles is actually the polar vortex. The Earth rotates from west to east, and so does the air. And the polar vortex also rotates from west to east at about 150 miles an hour speed. Coming to the North Pole, when the vortex of the Arctic is stable and strong, there is a single vortex with a jet stream of well-contained cold air that is in the shape of a distorted donut circling counterclockwise. But when this northern vortex weakens, it's no longer going to be just one vortex, but instead will break up into two or more smaller vortices. And all of this flow of Arctic air becomes more disorganized, and the masses of cold Arctic air is pushed towards the equator and down into the United States and parts of Europe and Asia. And in the United States, this cold Arctic air brings a rapid and sharp temperature drop to single digits and minus digits, and lots of snow down south until as far as Texas or Florida. And that is the reason why we now see sub-freezing temperatures and snow all over the United States at the time of filming this video on February 13th, 2021. Compared to the North Pole, the polar vortex at the South Pole is really well contained and it's a lot less distorted. When the Southern Polar Vortex weakens in the Antarctic, then Australia gets the abnormal cold front that drags air from Antarctica and they call it as a polar blast or a polar plunge. Now, this polar vortex phenomenon was first described all the way back in 1853, 
but it gained much popularity in 2013 as an explanation of the dangerous road conditions and very cold winter weather in North America. Can we predict the polar vortex? Well, yes! NASA and NOAA weather satellites help us to predict weather. And by keeping a very watchful eye on Earth's weather and potential storm formations, these satellites can provide up-to-the-minute information about Earth's weather. This helps scientists make predictions about severe weather, like polar vortexes, which we can see in weather forecasts and prepares us for the hazardous winter weather. Now, what we are seeing right now is the real data collected by the NASA's Atmospheric Infrared Sounder Mission, AIRS instrument, while flying on the Earth orbit satellite in the winter of 2013 to 2014. AIRS collects the temperature at about 1,000 kilometers above the sea level. Dark purple is the coldest and red is the warmest. And you can see here the normal or the stable polar vortex when the dark purple color is focused on Canada and the Arctic. But when the polar vortex moves down towards the United States, you can see that that dark purple color moves over down to the eastern United States and then to the Gulf of Mexico and Florida. And when this happens, we get a blast of Arctic cold air that brings in below freezing temperatures and lots of snow. Usually, when polar vortexes bring cold fronts to these regions, huge amounts of snow and freezing rain, which becomes sleet and black ice on the roads with dangerously low temperatures, makes it not safe to drive on the roads. So if possible, don't drive. Don't go outside. Stay inside, indoors. Everything is closed during this time. And in order to better prepare for the polar vortex, make sure to have plenty of non-perishable food, water, blankets, and tools needed to clear snow and ice, like ice scrapers. With the potential for power outages, make sure that you have an emergency kit ready with flashlights, portable phone chargers, batteries, candles, matches, etc. Prevent pipes in your home from freezing and breaking by using faucet covers or other means. And one more important thing is to protect our pets by not letting them outside. So make sure to stay safe and stay home. Thanks so much for watching. Love you, Makash.